you there, Margaret? Can we talk about sex? Is that okay? I mean, we're not actually going to, but... Um... And I'm going to get around to it in a funny, I don't know. So, I was thinking about my squash plant. And one of these days, I'm going to have to let you snoop my plant stash, or like my garden. Uh, but the time I, I tried to post a video with all my plants in it, it didn't work so we're not going to but uh, uh so i've been ogling my patty pan my one surviving vine kind of this holy thing i wonder if i should put him in the cat uh fort anyway um <clears throat> squash i i really became thoroughly aware and i'm gonna bounce around so just listen i hope i, I hope hope that I am aware of like, hey, you gotta talk. I've been kind of trying to review and learn from my material. Anyway, because uh, it's frustrating when I try to make notes on the babble. Oh, I have to turn it up at this many minutes in. So at uh, uh, <laughs> the synopsis, uh, at two minutes, you know, give it a minute, two minutes in. <coughs> Probably need to crank the volume. <clears throat> All right. So last summer, um, I like I've always known, but last summer I uh let it just wash over me how much it made me happy to know uh, that squash plants are. At the time, I was, you know, a little more crude, perhaps. Um, but they, they're a plant, like those botanical drawings that I showed. Uh, they, they tickle these kind of sexual or erotic parts of our brain sometimes. Um, because plants are. And, and squash, and I think melons and the cucumbers. Um, they all do this. Uh, they have a boy flower and a girl flower. I mean, some plants split off and are like mommies and daddies, but um, but for things like squash plants, um, and then a lot of uh, <clears throat> flowering or like seed bearing plants or fruiting plants can do it. Fruit fruiting plant uh, trees are fascinating, but anyway. Um, squash plants and these plants that have like, they have to be pollinated in a special way. It's not like an apple where the apple blossom gets pollinated by the bees with other apple blossom pollen. And then it's, you know, whatever. And maybe, maybe apple ones are the same. Cause if I remember right, there are like cherries that sometimes have, so squash plants I know this for sure because I, I personally like giggled and giggled through the whole season with some yellow uh the the the, the long yellow soft skin squash that look like a zucchini but they're yellow <clears throat> um and just had a great time and just let myself fall fully fully in love with squash um I have this epic dream of of a pumpkin patch but I'll have to do that next year um, <clears throat> squashes have boy flowers and girl flowers and the girl flowers or the female flower has, uh, like a miniature fruit on the face. Um, so that's how you can tell it has like a, my patty pan just has this, <laughs> this little, it's, it doesn't look like a patty pan, but you can tell that it's, um, it's a fruit. It's a the beginnings of a fruit and then the flower poops out of that her boy flowers don't have a fruit and that's the only difference and it's it's uh I don't know it's fantastic to me anyway uh so I, and I was just thinking these uh plants are a fantastic way to teach us 
of the embodiment of both masculine and feminine within one body that draws uh, sustenance from, and in the squashes plant, in the squash plants case, the soil and the sun. Um, uh, and in our case, you know, that's your journey. That's your meaning making. That's your work. Uh, to figure that out, but um, it's just a, it's a great way to kind of illustrate this and I'll go into into depth It's not just that they that they have sort of like they're more like a hermaphrodite than humans in the sense that they have uh, the the organ or the the production the the organ of production or the, the anatomical part of production of both sexes in one plant and that's not that's not where I'm going with it at all, uh, and, 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 and this is why. Um, male flowers, I learned this with my squashes last year, have a, a different opening time uh, or period or span. You know, they, they don't, I can't remember, and, and it might be different for my patty pan. This is a totally different experience in ways. Um, so the, 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 the male flower of the same plant can, you know, uh, <clears throat> pollinate and, and, and make this plant kind of switch gears to bear fruit. Uh, but the problem is like, and I don't, like I say, I might let you snoop sometime, but, uh, one of them doesn't stay open as long and my, my plant last year was only producing I think it was male flowers for the longest time and then finally I got one no it was only females for a really long time and finally the, the boys started and people on the forums I've, I've noticed that they're you know they'll have these time these 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 kind of uh, phenomena of where their plant just can't sync up until well into the season and their their harvest just don't and I haven't figured out what that's about because people will give you an answer that it's like nutrition or it's a heat some way metabolism I don't know I think it's like all of the above and none of it at the same time because we, we have to remember that you have to pay attention to what is growing and crawling. My mom drew my attention to spiders recently. Why, why, are, why do I see spiders in my house already? It's not, I don't know, it's kind of for where we live. I don't, I don't, and then even where she lives, we're, we're kind of on a, well, I guess she is way more southern. Anyway, weird time, and we're both seeing spiders. Uh, so you, you have to pay attention to kind of what's going on. So the, the, all I'm getting at is there is no like straight on, like this is the reason why your plant isn't syncing up. Here's what you can do for your plant that the plant can't do for itself physiologically or physically um, to, to help it start. Cause I've, I, so, so last year I'm growing a yellow thin skin squash in like a, they kind of have like a, a skinnier end and more bulbous end, but they look like a zucchini, uh, but they're yellow. And, and instead of that like cucumber shape, that, that I'm just going to go ahead and say that phallic shape, um, these these patty pan are, are radial, they're discs, and they, they're, they're kind of like a spaceship. They've got like a bulb in the middle that's kind of round, but then it has this edge that flattens it out. Anyway, I guess I'm just freaking out, goof, uh, geeking out on plants again. Uh, so this year, it's like as soon as that plant and I got used to each other and more, um, I got used to the soil because I, I don't know why I torture myself and I'm a masochist, but I just use all different kinds of dirt and then I don't remember what kind of dirt I put in my containers uh, so every container takes and needs water a little differently and that one got some funny dirt that I haven't been able to really sync up with it's like a little beat me up please don't beat me up um, 
But as soon as we got in sync and this and this plant reached uh, a, like a, a level of maturation where it could start producing flowers, it's a it's a perfect match. And the funny thing is, I think that it was in the order that the flowers stay open longer. So I believe it's the female flower that only opens and then it fades. The uh, they might both, but one or the other, like, will open and fade, and then the other one will open and die. Um, and I think it just, I don't know, it just synced up this year. And it, I'm just fascinated by why that is. Of all the things to be curious about, I want to know why my patty pan is, like, ready to make babies as soon as it's, I don't know, it's weird. Um, I think it is very cool. When I say weird, it's not as a bad thing. <clears throat> so, the reason I really want to talk about that is not because I want to talk about, like, boning. But, there is this thing that's on my mind about masculine, feminine, and how we embody both, no matter how we identify and how we identify matters. I mean, there's a reason it doesn't feel good to be in a world that approaches you in a way other than what you identify as, or that's real. Um, and, and even if you're, you have the privilege of walking around being easily identifiable as what you, your ego thinks that you are or that your meat suit presents as. Um, <clears throat> you still have the relationship within yourself of, um, the, the approach of masculine and feminine. And I'll just stick with the plant analogy because, or metaphor, because um, a lot of, uh, I don't know if the right word is herbalist, but uh, occultist is probably a better way to describe it. A lot of occultists uh, may use a, a, I learned the, the real, like, or not the, not that this is like the real, I just, I learned the, the, the meaning of the word pantheon in a way that made sense to me finally. Um, the pantheon that they use, or like the culture, the approach that they take, uh, as as they uh, um, sort of enrich. It's like that that mother's milk, you know. That's that first kind of washing over of that bacteria that establishes that culture. Again, I'm speaking in metaphor, but like uh, so, it's it's like that that mental or or auric culture that has been established. So within uh, some of these schools of thought, or or uh, Intuitively, this is, I guess, how people approach is that plants can have like a masculine um, and a moose. Uh, anima. Anyway, that, that, that um, they kind of fall under, like they would say, I believe that rosemary is masculine. That um, I think lavender is masculine. We kind of want to think that it's, it's, but, but the reason why we give even plants that we use as medicine or for magic, um, why we even give them sex is that they speak a language. Um, and I don't believe for a second that any plant is all the way masculine or all the way feminine on any level. Um, but, but as humans, we have been able to suss out these subtle variations within our approach or like this lens that we process our reality through and we've been able to categorize like we've been able to form a language a rapport with plants and people have been starting the you know the the studiers you know the, the seekers um you know the the hermeticists i think are people who 
Yes, a lot is secret and not written down, but the things that we still have were written down in some way, even if it was in a code. Um, they, uh, <clears throat> they were studying because they didn't close their mind uh, through this process of belief. Um, they were seeking. So they had to write down, they had to make notes. You know what I mean? Cause they didn't have it all figured out. It was like, Oh, we've already figured that out. Don't worry about it. You know, go buy yourself a Bible. They were writing things down and they felt like a lot of it had to be encoded in other things. But, uh, thank, thank goodness they did because these are, these are some of the, the ways that we've built a, a language with the, the physical, um, world around us and the plant life and and all these spirits and all these things that are he of here and not here and it's it's just incredible you know um and they do they they want to attribute a, a masculine or a feminine to the plant and i i just i really believe that 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 it's the way that the plant uh speaks to us so so that's how really when we say um hello rosemary uh, you are so handsome today. What we are saying is, um, my name is, you know, this, and you're, I've decided that you're a guy and that this is what you do. We're not necessarily saying, ah, you know, this is exactly what this means. We're just, when we write things down, when we give things titles, a lot of the time we can see this. I'm, I'm drawing a blank on a good example right now, but, um, the way we write things down or identify things will, will tell us exactly what uh, the people who discovered it at the time uh, were, were thinking. Like, we have a, a funny way of using words to kind of accidentally say what we really mean in a larger, uh, I think you know, I think I know what I mean. <clears throat> so, uh, you get a plant, I'll just stay with rosemary, you get a plant that we like to think of sometimes as masculine. And, and, I guess, uh, um, the sort of pantheon or the, the green witch or the, uh, whatever school of thought that, that usually assigns masculine, feminine, or like, establishes a rapport, a communicative verbal rapport with plants in a way that's measurable and documentable. Um, they are using a pantheon that has to do with elements and directions, which is something that I thought I was comfortable with the knowledge of, but now like my compass is broken, so I'm not going to talk about it, but it has to do with that. And it has to do with it's assigning, um, masculine feminine characteristics to uh just a lot of stuff and in anthropology people will call that uh, uh and i don't know if anthropology is the right word there's probably a more specific uh subject title but uh subject of study title uh but the the, the they call um Uh, the, the, the <clears throat> so that I guess I just I guess I just wasn't supposed to talk about it but um or maybe I'll find it later it's a it's an animism thing uh Life is a word that we want to assign a very broad, um, gray, like broad, uh, vast gray area, kind of like, and yet call it this umbrella to shine it. Like, this is life. Life is like a, a non answer. Life is, um, is everything. Um, we, we, we want to assign humanness to something that is everything. And this, this idea or this notion of, uh, masculine, feminine, and it's, it's a spectrum and they're extreme. It, it's, um, 
I think that's wrong. And I think that approaching um, our outer world, be it plants or other people, utilizing this um, spectrum kind of thinking of like normal is kind of, we, we try to get everything lumped in here and these extremes, like we're gonna have, we have to figure out how to live with them. Um, I I uh, I just don't think that that's it. I don't think that that's so. And I don't I don't um, I don't really miss my compass right now. I, I know I'll reorient, and I'm I'm kind of getting excited that I'm on this V ride um, as the as the needle spins. But we don't need to assign a a, a gender within our pantheon. So like I I think about. Um, the counterparts in the tarot and the the empress and the emperor um and i've and i've just i've translated i've not trusted myself to such a degree that i've used these schools of thought or um method uh, methodologies or like how to approach studying my experience or like how to translate what I think my experiences or like my perceptions of life into something that makes sense because there's this interesting ways of figuring things out that go on in here you know um so it's uh it's not about assigning a A role or like your job as feminine is blank and this job or and when I talk about human beings and plants embodying both it's not about like keeping them always in balance all the time it's electricity so it's it's um and I don't know enough about electricity to talk about but I'll try so charges and currents and the um is it an electron and anyway so it's the 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 negative and the positive force when you look at a battery the um the positive is usually the the plus sign pop out side um and then the you know flat side is is going to be your negative um and, and when we break down, I know just enough about it. <laughs> when we break down what that means is there's a, there's an innie and an outie. <laughs> and um, when we look at flowers or uh, fruiting vines like the squashes, um, there's an outie and there's an innie. And the innie usually has this beautiful beginning bud of the fruit um so what am I getting at I, the, the, the point is is that it's it's um receptive in a battery right the negative is is pulling in or or it's like a a flux like it's moving pulling it through because when we when we use a battery we're enlivening a circuit we're enlivening a system we're trying to power something so without the the negative force without that that flat end of the battery you don't really i mean even i think with water if you just shot water in one direction it would eventually find its way out or at least like recirculate you know especially if it's in like a, a fish tank you know it's square it's going to shoot out and find its way back and shoot out and find its way back as long as there's that really as long as there's that receiving force so it's both it's even with electricity with water both like if you're gonna have movement you're gonna have a receiving you're gonna have a like a a suction or, or whatever so uh and then the the the, the plus side the sticky outy the of the battery is gonna be the positive force so the flat side is the negative it's the drawing in you get a lot of like you have movement because you have that negative force and then you have the positive force which is uh, 
positive, which is uh, enlivening, which is giving that um, jolt, right? Uh, so that, that for me is a way better metaphor, or the squash plant is a way better metaphor for how masculine, feminine exist in our psychology as well as within our physiology because, I mean, I, I encourage you to do your research. Um, being male uh, physiologically and genetically um, doesn't necessarily mean that, that you have male organs, that you have male... Um, it's a, a, I have gonads, but they're ovaries. You have, you know, um, you have gonads basically a lot of different places because we, we have components of sex or uh, hormones that come from various organs and a gonad is where you get your sex hormones. So, um, and, and it's something that we need to study more, but it's more of a battery than a, than something that's like light versus dark and balancing it at all times and and sometimes you need more negative and sometimes you need more positive sometimes it's time for you know daddy cat emperor to be in the throne chair instead of queen of wands and that's okay it's i don't i don't want it to ever be one way forever and always so it's like I need to be in flux. I need that movement. Um, another example of masculine, feminine uh, energies and uh, uh, the tarot is is uh, the the moon. Um, the the moon card is a is a pretty creepy card. Um, so like the tower, death, the devil, the moon. For me, you know. <laughs> uh, Five of Cups, Eight of Swords. I think it's like the Nine and Ten of Swords. I was really Ten of Swords for me started to feel good because it means the end is near. But like Nine of Swords, there's really no way to receive that up or down. That's nice. They all live together. So the Moon is um is dark and shadowy and scary. And those things have the the negative suction movement movementing. Uh, you know, ways about them, their, their, their womanly guile, you know, it's, and, and so I, I just, I hope I'm making any sense. The, the masculine feminine within things that we want to approach in a human way. So if we're going to go about things in a really animistic way, fine. Uh, but, but we have to know that when we're talking about masculine feminine and plants, we're not talking about that plant's a, a masculine spirit, we're talking about that plant speaks to my masculine spirit as a living body, as a living thing in this way. And that, and, and like, we need to learn more. We need, and we need to introduce ourselves to the rosemary so that we can learn what that rosemary does for us. Um, and where we're at in any moment. So it's just, it's, uh, I, I was gonna talk about a lot more, but I'm. I think I said what I was supposed to say. Um, I was gonna go on some tangent about stuff that would have proved my point in the opposite way I would have meant it. Uh, yeah, I, I don't want a point. Anyway, um, it would have proven a point I don't want made. That, that's not true. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the, the, the squash plant, uh, is coming soon. I've just decided you can meet my patty pan. Um, and it's just, uh, it's, it's fun to toss your compass at the moon, yeah, at the moon, I don't know, at a rock every so often. Let your heel come down on it really hard. Kind of feels good. But uh, yeah, this this idea of like a, a societal morality or like a, a global morality or an up down, um, right wrong. It's it's not something 
I miss at all. It's not in the jar and I don't miss it. It's invigorating. And it's, uh, it's, it, it just feels the way truth feels when you first discover it right before you look at it for what it is and smash it up and reinvent it again. Big things to come. I just know it. I just know it. And um, the other thing about the moon is that in my experience of uh, note taking and study, <laughs> uh, I've, I've discovered that the moon has a suction effect which is which we think of the moon as being very feminine. So instead of saying the way the moon approaches us is very feminine, the way I'm starting to understand it is the way the moon approaches us is very masculine because it takes <clears throat> as as the as the moon phase sort of shifts into this bigger and bigger you know, uh, reflective conduit's not the right word, but it's a, it's a reflector. So as, a, and, and, and things get, uh, changed and amplified as they are processed. So the sunlight's being processed and the, is, is being changed in the process of the reflection happening. Um, and as that reflection, as that sunlight grows and how much of the sunlight is being exposed or like shown back uh, the suction increases and it takes from us it consumes from us it feeds from us and it feels masculine even though to receive or to feed or to be nourished by and to suck, like in the fish tank, that negative, or in the, in the battery, that suck, you would think that that's masculine. That feels very masculine. The way it makes us is that, mm, The process feels masculine to me because it's forceful. It feels positive because there is uh, an actual tangible, it, and it's sunlight reflected. So in that process, it is changed. Just like I think it's blowfish liver or something. I can't remember what it's called in Japan. They'll, they'll serve it at sushi shops and you have to really trust your chef because um, unless that is fermented properly and it goes through the process of fermentation, fermented, fermentation, um, it's toxic as fuck and it will kill you. So the, 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 the reflection coming from the moon as the moon is becoming full is the sun being changed. It's being processed as it's reflected. Um, and that is still the sun that still is movement that still is masculine that still is positive that still is Audi um, it's a it's the uh, it's kind of it becomes chicken or an egg thing at, at some point because the moon we we, we feel uh, that the moon sucks from us or, or we want to battle. We, we, a lot of times, I, I know last summer, I want to battle. I, I become a warrior when the moon is full. I, I tend to armor up and fight back a lot because what, it, what is happening is the moon is it's sucking. It's trying to take. It's trying to take from us. It's trying to encourage us to release. Um, and, and that releasing is masculine. So that's why we introduce ourselves to the moon such that I, I, I see, I understand that you are sunlight and that you are initiating force, but 
that process of reflection turns it kind of into something else. It transmutes this this masculine force in a in a feminine language that speaks to that feminine which which you know it wants us to release. It speaks to the, it, it, the, the, the feminine nature of the moon speaks to the masculine within us. I, sorry, I'm saying this really poorly. The feminine of the moon, which is the, the masculine sun rays being changed into feminine force, which is negative force, which is suction which speaks to the masculine within our bodies, within our psyches, within our psychologies, and tries to, tries to get that release, tries to get that out so it can be consumed, so it can be sucked in and away from you. Um, but where did the sun come from? Dark, negative, feminine, energy so it like I say it becomes chicken or an egg chicken or egg at some point just like uh, the uh, endocrinology and, and immune system fields in, in had so many different ways uh, so we have these echoes of symmetry going through the ways that the fabric of existence or reality is sort of woven together, how we experience, how it becomes a tangible experience. We have these, these, symmet these symmetries, these, uh, the, I don't know, I think it's called the Fibonacci sequence, sort of mathematically details or explains why the conch shell has the same exact kind of twirl as the fern leaf as you know all these different things um and and like, we can even go so far as to say like why that is visually and, and on a sensory level extremely appealing uh numbers sex gender masculine feminine squash plants it's all i think shouting at us to kind of understand that there's so much more to reality than what we walk around believing in and when we hear things about I know that I'm speaking I'm saying we because I, I know I'm in the club like when when I hear ancient aliens and and these like fantastic paranormal shows and things like yeah it's fun but that's entertainment you know start getting into tarot and and I'm super out of alignment in my life and the the, um, the readings are just there because it feels like it's like a social you know it's like a social masturbation like it's it's trying to meet a need um, by myself which is actually a social need which is actually a, a need that requires other people it becomes this gossip channel you know um, and it's not even cross watching like I'm I am I am listening to my own readings as if this is gossip. So when we're super out of alignment, it, it, it just, it starts to, it, it's like so much negative anger and like, you know, you say, oh, it's all just bullshit. It's all entertainment, you know, um, because things just aren't working for you. Like, so like, it just is. I don't, I, I, I'm running out of ideas of like how to tie all these things together. I feel like I'm knitting five sweaters together that didn't have anything to do with each other. But, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's not just my compass that's falling apart. Like it's, so it's the directions, it's the elements, it's the way I've approached masculine, feminine, it's the way I've approached um, roles or self-work or what is the, the 
parts work that a lot of psych psychologists will talk about as far as um, everybody having like this split personality because when we first step into ego that's our first experience of a of like a shatter of like a, a spark or like a, a splinter coming off and all through our lives as we are traumatized and as we will be uh, those splinters pop and pop and pop and pop and before you know it the inside of your psyche or your psychology is made up of its entire own pantheon of archetypes and tarot cards and you know last time I went really deep and looked inside of my pantheon uh, I saw a lot of, of varied energies and um, they were all kind of intermingling and it was much like a, a lunchroom cafeteria you know they've got these groupings some groupings that are mixed with other groupings but the individuals generally tend to stay with the grouping but in my inner pantheon I know of probably six eight months ago there were all these swarms and like and I was active and I could kind of see and then when I when I kind of called them to attention to like become aware of yourself and the things around you they all kind of started looking oh god there are people outside of my group there are people outside of me and they start trying to interact with each other but there's like this one part of the room that nobody's in and I'm like okay so what's going on over there and within my own self within my own personality of all these different splintered off there's a you know there's a wild woman who's 50 and she can't paint for shit but she does it like she's married to it and you know like she's amazing I love her uh, there's there they're just like all these different characters there's the um, too good mother is in there there's the 20 year old that just like is on fire and can't keep her clothes on and you know like they're they're all these different my, my I have an inner pantheon of like I have we all do uh, but this is this is like an approach that makes sense to me is this parts work um, and, and there was this one 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 place that was you know nobody was hanging out so I'm like yeah you guys are boring I'm gonna go see what's over here so um, and it was just this dirty smelly contorted disgusting thing I'm like oh god I don't blame you maybe I should look away but I couldn't look away and it, it turned out to be my inner child uh, and so I took it out and I, I in my imagination I brought that dirty thing into this 3d world and I, I took a shower with it and we we washed her up and put her back in there and lo and behold like um, I had dude parts I had feminine part I had parts that I had never even heard of coming out to greet this baby like oh my god where have you been like all of these different parts within me have nothing in common other than like they love picking wildflowers and nobody can figure out why that is until this little girl shows up and then they're like, oh my God, we all have so much in common because we all do so many different things for this little girl because our um, reason for existence is to keep this little girl safe. And they, they come together around this little girl, but I'm the one that has to be responsible for keeping that little girl who she is so that they can recognize her. The baby girls don't get baths when they're hiding under a chair and nobody can see them and they start smelling like a dirty loaf of bread you're not gonna you're not gonna think that that's the little girl anyway it's not about keeping everything in balance all the time it's not about being in control at all it's mostly just like observing I think and, and trying to remain curious but masculine feminine is just this really fun thing that like I'd rather play with that than uh, directions anymore at all and it's funny because I was really upset about my compass breaking for about two days and as this new awareness starts to settle over me of, of basically just sex I, I'm approaching things um, and I've been doing it, I've, I just caught myself, it's been probably a year since I've been calling girl things mama. Um, but uh, I did the brief, brief, brief Googling, probably bullshit, but it feels good. Uh, the, the ama, and that one I didn't really Google at all, but ama is a, a mom sound, is, what, is how we communicate to our mothers. Baba is the man, is the masculine, is our, is our father. 
and Baba, I know, is like, I can't remember what language it is, what the root is for it, but Baba is a very old term for grandfather, like revered elder father. Uh, Ama, I think, is just infant gibberish, um, which is probably the most sacred language humans have ever heard spoken, but we don't think of it as such. But Ama, so I start to approach the world as, as Ama and Baba, and um, and uh, as such, uh, as my as I feel my body kind of doing its thing, I think of like where where is Ama, where is Baba? So as I did my um, I did an herbal scrub with some sea salt and like eleven different herbs that I didn't even know I had that many, and like I did I only used five out of the cabinet anyway. Um, it was, it was just this wonderful experience and I, I tried to remain really aware and I don't even know why I didn't set the atten intention to do that but I all, the, all of a sudden became very aware that I needed to um, make sure that the that ama my left hand was scooping the mixture out of the jar and Baba was doing the work of applying it and it felt really meaningful and my, my body is really grateful I I'm not sore after the yoga yesterday. I did sleep a lot. I had a four hour um, late morning afternoon nap and um, and then did the scrub and everything and I just I feel so incredibly nourished. I think I'm starting to explore what receiving is about. I, I have identified in the last several years that I struggle with with um, the archetype, the, the totality of the archetypal energy of receiving. Um, I, I don't know that everybody learns the same way, but I know that I have to start bottom up. So I had to learn I guess how to do it uh, in a different way but I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of getting there. It sucks that I didn't take advantage of my fertile years, but you know, such is life. Maybe it'll make me an even better spirit midwife in my future if that's still what I want to do then. I want to help spirit break through. And I don't, I don't, I don't have to, you know. I'm not entitled to, I, I, and, and, and I'm not lost without, you know, the experience of fertility and childbirth and motherhood. I mean, I can still do all of those things, just in different ways, just, just it's, it's a, another example of the, of the compass getting crushed under the heel, right? Like, a, just a switch up of direction. And you can say it in those words and make it smaller than it is, but we'll just make that our inside joke. Good night, Amma. <laughs>